Because our trigonometric functions are all uh, come, all come from triangles, and uh, there's only three sides of a triangle, and we have the Pythagorean theorem, we actually have a lot of identities, things that connect our our functions. So the first set here are the reciprocal identities, and this is just knowing that sine and cosecant functions are reciprocals of each other. Okay, that's these two here. That uh, if you know the cosecant of an angle, you can just take its reciprocal and get the sine, or vice versa. Okay. Same thing with cosine and secant functions. Those are reciprocals of each other. And the tangent and cotangent functions. Those are reciprocals of each other as well. So those, these are what we call the reciprocal identities. And they're very, very nice um, as far as finding uh, trigonometric functions when we already know one. We also have the quotient identities. And these are the identities where... Uh, it turns out that tangent is actually sine divided by cosine. And I'm going to go ahead and show, the, show you why here. Sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, if you divide fractions, you can flip the denominator and multiply. So that would be, be multiplying by hypotenuse over adjacent. And note that the hypotenuse cancels and you get opposite over adjacent, which is tangent. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's a similar proof for the cotangent being the cosine over the sine. And these are going to be very useful to us later on um, uh, because there's going to be, we're going to be able to memorize the sine and cosine of angles pretty quickly. There's, a, there's some nice patterns. And uh, if you know sine and cosine, then uh, using these, these quotient identities, and the reciprocal identities, you can then find the other four trigonometric uh, functions if you just know sine and cosine. And finally, we've got the Pythagorean identities. And the Pythagorean identities come, they're called that because they come directly from the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to prove all three of these, um, but I will prove this first one so that you can see why it's true. Uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And we're saying, if we take that and square it, and then plus, and then take the cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, and square that, we get opposite squared plus adjacent squared, and both of those have the same denominator of the hypotenuse squared. But note that because the Pythagorean theorem says that those two sides, opposite squared plus adjacent squared, those are the two legs of a right triangle. That's like a squared plus b squared, which is equal to c squared. In other words, this numerator is the hypotenuse squared. Well, the hypotenuse squared divided by hypotenuse squared is equal to 1. Okay. The proofs of the other two, um, you can actually get by simply taking this equation and dividing both sides. I'm going to write it here. Divide both sides here uh, by the cosine squared of theta. And if you divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared, you actually get this one. And if you divide both sides by sine squared of theta, then you get this one. So those are what are called the Pythagorean identities. Let's use an identity, some identities, to find some trigonometric values. Let theta be an acute angle such that sine of theta is equal to 0 0.6. Find the value of cosine of theta and tangent of theta using trigonometric identities. So cosine of theta, we have a, the Pythagorean identity that relates sine and cosine to us. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. And we happen to know that sine of theta is 0 0.6. So this is saying 0 0.6 squared plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So I can, this 0 0.6 squared is 0 0.36. And I can subtra subtract that over. And we get cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus 0 0.36, which is 0 0.64. Then we can take the square root of this, and we get cosine of theta equals 0 0.8. So I know cosine of theta now. To get tangent of theta, now that we know sine and cosine of theta, uh, we have the identity, the quotient identity, which says that the tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta 
over cosine of theta. Sine of theta was told to us as 0 0.6, and cosine of theta is 0 0.8. We just found that. Okay, and this is 3 fourths, or 0 0.75. Another example, we have theta uh, as an acute angle, and we know that tangent of theta is equal to one-third. We like to find the value of cotangent of theta and secant of theta using trigonometric identities. So we're looking for a, a relationship between tangent and, uh, and cotangent, if we have one. And we do. Okay? Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. We have that cotangent of theta is equal to one over tangent of theta. Well, that's 1 over 1 third, which is equal to 3. To get secant, we'd like to know if there's some relationship between tangent and maybe cotangent and secant. And, uh, and there is an identity. The identity is 1 plus the tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. So 1 plus, we know tangent of theta is 1 third. So this is 1 plus 1 third squared is equal to secant squared of theta. So we can simplify this. This is 1 plus 1 ninth equals secant squared of theta. This is, if I get a common denominator, this is 9 over 9 plus 1 over 9, which is 10 ninths equals the secant squared of theta. So to get secant of theta, I take the square root. I get the square root of 10 over 3, and that's the secant of theta. So by just knowing the tangent of theta, we were able to find the cotangent of theta and the secant of theta. Note that there's a lot more that we could do. If you know the secant of theta, you can find the cosine of theta. And if we know the cosine of theta and the tangent of theta, we can find sine of theta. So it turns out that just knowing one trigonometric function allows us to find all six. Use trigonometric identities to prove the formula. So when proving a, uh, a formula or an equation involving trigonometric functions, we want to use those identities. We're going to start with one side of the equation um, and try and get to the other. So I like the left side here. It looks more complicated, which means it's going to be easier to work with, actually. And that's, I know that's kind of maybe counterintuitive. But when proving trigonometric identities and uh, formulas, that's going to be the case. So sine of theta. I know a relationship between sine of theta and cosecant of theta. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal, 1 over sine of theta. Well, I can cancel those out, and I get 1. Looks like I'm done, right? This, that is equal to this, which is equal to 1. Pretty nice and simple there. For part B, this one looks a little bit more complicated. Let's go ahead and multiply. I get cosecant times cosecant. That's cosecant squared of theta. Then cosecant times a negative cotangent, so oops, that's neg negative cosecant theta, cotangent theta. And then cotangent times cosecant plus cotangent theta, cosecant theta. And then cotangent times negative cotangent, that's negative cotangent squared theta. Notice that these two middle terms are actually the same. Okay. And we have a, we have a, several Pythagorean identities, okay? One of those identities, and it doesn't really matter which one, uh, well, but one of the identities involves a cosecant squared and a cotangent squared, okay? The identity uh, is that one uh, plus uh, the cotangent squared of theta is equal to the cosecant squared of theta. So that means I can take this cosecant squared of theta and replace it with that. Okay, so I now have 1 plus cotangent squared of theta, and then minus cotangent squared of theta, and those two terms cancel out, and we just get 1. So we've, we've been able to prove this formula using that identity.